First of all, uh, obviously, Matthew, you're a, a local guy. If you could tell us briefly um, about your uh, where you're from here in Massachusetts. Yeah, it's from Southeast Plymouth down in Cape Cod. I went to school in Hyannis and uh, then went to uh, Harvard and MIT for college. I'm a Zurich Sciences degree, and now I work as a meteorologist and also a storm chaser. And obviously, um, you made big news. You were aboard one of the Hurricane Hunter aircraft. Maybe if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about the journey, about what you experienced. I believe I saw a picture of you getting a little bit sick on the plane as well. <laughs> uh, that is true. You know, it's interesting. The folks at NOAA told me they hadn't had any other media folks sign up for one of these flights this season. Uh, I leapt at the opportunity to fly into Melissa because I knew that Melissa would be a high-end storm. I planned this about a week, week and a half ago. Grateful to the folks at NOAA for making it happen. But the best way I can describe it is sort of being on Space Mountain at Disney World, a roller coaster in the dark. We flew in there Sunday night and, you know, we were jostled up, down, left, right, all over the place. The turbulence was pretty significant, not nearly as bad as I expected, though, given how high end Melissa was at that point. But what struck me was the sudden onset of calm conditions in the eye. It was like standing in the middle of this big atmospheric whirlpool. The entire world was spinning around me. For about 90 seconds, we were in the eye and I could look up and see a starry sky overhead. It was beautiful and peaceful and sinisterly serene, knowing that I was in this oasis of calm and yet all around me, hellacious conditions, 140 plus mile per hour winds were swirling around in the eye wall. Now, when you were in there, it was it was about to become a Cat 5, is that right? Correct. Or had it already, okay. Um, now, did you experience uh, what they call sort of a sawtooth effect in the eye? Yeah, so, so what surprised me was that uh, you tend to get these mesovortices, these sort of little contortions of the inner eye wall, mostly when a storm is strengthening quickly. And we saw that on Saturday night and again on Monday into Tuesday. We didn't see that so much on Sunday night because there was a plateau in strengthening. And so Melissa, despite being a high-end storm, was very crisp and easy to fly into. Okay. Uh, you've got to tell me about, yeah, it's more specifically, when you're in the eye wall, um, is it just, is it up and down? Is it you're being jostled side to side? Is it all of the above? Is it like the worst uh, airplane turbulence you can imagine? Or is it, or is it actually, on, on the contrary, is it, is it not as bad as you might think? You know, it was pretty solid turbulence. Anything that wasn't strapped down would go flying. And interestingly, I did think it would be worse. I actually overnighted motion sickness bags from Amazon. I, I have a pretty strong stomach, and yet all the jostling up and down for four or five hours on end was definitely enough to make me pretty queasy. But given the strength of the storm, I expected worse turbulence. Now, that said, on Monday and Tuesday, multiple missions had to be aborted due to extreme turbulence and stress on the aircraft airframes. Um, tell me a little bit, just meteorologically speaking, you've obviously been all over social media, you've been tracking it. Um, tell me just maybe your, some perspective that you might have on the, the sheer size and strength uh, of Melissa compared to obviously anything else that you've experienced or, or, or tracked in your, uh, in your time. You know, I've been up close and personal with 52 tornadoes, lost nine windshields and softball size hail. I've traveled to various countries for four total solar eclipses. And yet being in the middle of Melissa was humbling. It's meteorological perfection in the worst way possible. To get a high-end hurricane like this, you need incredibly warm ocean waters, humidity at all levels of the atmosphere. You need weak upper level winds so as to not knock the storm off kilter. And you need spreading of the air aloft, divergence to evacuate the exhaust so more fuel can come in from below. Melissa checked every single box. It was meteorological perfection. And unfortunately, that perfection is what's proving so deadly in Jamaica. Yeah. Um, what? So what's next for you? Um, you? You said you've been to tornadoes, you've been inside the eye of, uh, of a nearing Cat 5 hurricane. Is, is there something else on your bucket list, on your weather bucket list? I had a couple things on my bucket list. Number one was covering a tornado live on TV with a tornado in the background. And I did that. Uh, being in a Cat 5, Melissa was almost a Cat 5 when I was there. I need to be in the eye of a Cat 5. And of course, I'm sensitive to the fact that, you know, these phenomena are so dangerous to people and, and, and so destructive. But from a scientific standpoint, my goal is to be there in every storm to communicate it as best I can to the audiences we serve. Yeah, and you do a great job. I think that's worthy of note that um, obviously someone like yourself, you, you, you know, you know, um, 
you know the right precautions to take, and this is not something that, obviously, not too many folks got the chance to fly inside the eye of a hurricane, but when you're chasing tornadoes or, or severe weather, you know, it really does, you really do have to take all the precautions, and you, you know, I, I've watched you over the years, you really are a, a, a great professional at doing just that. Uh, any, any last thing you'd like to add about your, your trip inside of Melissa? Anything that we missed? I'm just so grateful to the uh, Hurricane Hunters for allowing me to tag along. NOAA has been great. Over the years, I've worked closely with their PR team. Uh, they've been phenomenal. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. Anytime. Pass my uh, best to the team. I hope everyone's I doing sure well. Will.